church. It's great to be in the house of God. It's a nice crisp morning and it's a joy. We've had an extra hour's sleep, so we're feeling refreshed. Yes? Yeah, let's all stand. We're ready to worship God. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you're with us. We thank you that your presence is right here and we brought your presence here. We just love you and give you the glory that you deserve. Lord, we thank you for every blessing that is ours in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the love that is bestowed upon us. We thank you for the joy, Lord. At times we don't admit to it, we don't claim it. So today we claim the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we're going to keep joyous in God and we're going to keep praising God. And we're going to do that with all that we have in Jesus' mighty name. Let's worship God together. Good morning, church. It would help if we turn the microphones on, right? You ready to worship this morning? And it's good to see you. Let's sing, We Have Set. We have set our homes apart for you. Let your glory come and feel me true. And pour out your Yeah. 
Child of weakness, watch and pray. I did not all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Sin, I left a crimson. 
Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand praise this morning. Jesus, Jesus, we worship. Singing in heaven, church, holy.
place we're worshiping Jesus. Jesus a clap offering worship Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus we know that something happens when we worship something happens as we begin collectively as the body of Christ begin to worship to glorify Jesus and it's just not any kind of worship it's it's lifting up Jesus lifting up the name of Jesus exalting Jesus because that's what the church is all about. That's why we gather. We gather to exalt the name of Jesus. And so He rose. And he reigns. We sing forever. A thousand hallelujahs. It doesn't matter what's going on in our life. We're gathered together as the church. And this morning we're singing a thousand hallelujahs. You know, I was, I was reading uh, this morning about the Apostle Paul. He's about to go to, uh, to Rome. I think, I don't know, I forget which city he's in. And he's, uh, the, he was in the church of uh, the, the city of Ephesus, and he and he's he was greeting them for the very last time. They're crying, he's crying. It's this whole thing, and he's, I'm going to Rome, and I know that persecution awaits me, and so on and so on. But I'm going <laughs> because I'm serving Christ and serving the cause of Christ. He's worshiping as he's going. It's a thousand hallelujahs. We worship, Lord. There might be things going on this morning in our lives, and. Um, there might be some challenges we're facing and some serious things. But, you know, in the midst of all of that, we worship. In the midst of all of this, we sing. Because something happens when we worship. Something happens as we sing. Something's broken when we begin to worship. It's exalting Jesus. I get this situation is really tough, but this situation does not have the last word. It's God that has the last word. I get, I get stuff's not good, but you know what? The, the stuff doesn't have the last word. It's God who has the last word. And so we worship the King of kings. And so we worship the Lord of lords. And so we worship the one who created the heavens and the earth. We worship our God. Let's sing forever and ever. A thousand hallelujahs. Let's pray. I'd love to sing it another six times, but we're going to pray. <laughs> and so, Father, we just come before you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we're so glad to gather together as the church you sense your presence and Father our spiritual tanks are filled as we worship and glorify you come by your spirit fill this house with your glory fill this house with your presence speak by the Holy Spirit minister heal sick bodies set us free from the chains that are holding us back, set us free. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, let the word of the Lord be preached with boldness and without fear in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can see things in your word that our, our natural mind and natural eyes cannot see. We bind every attack of the enemy, every strategy, scheme of the enemy, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We sing a hallelujah. We sing a hallelujah in the, in the midst of the storm. We sing a hallelujah. We worship you in the good times. We worship you for the amazing things that you've done. And we worship in the storm. Because our weapon is a weapon of praise to glorify and honor you. I thank you for what you're going to do this morning. I thank you that you will speak. Our lives will be changed because of what happens here today. Our eternal destinies will be different because of this morning, because of because what's taking place here this morning. Guide and lead by your spirit, I pray. And I thank you for what you're going to do amongst us in Jesus' glorious name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Amen. Come on, yeah. Let's worship Jesus. 
amazing congregation. Why don't you turn around and say hi to a few people. So good to have you in church this morning. Amen. Good morning, church. Hope you're all doing well on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, just want to first of all and just say a nice, big, warm welcome to anyone that's new. This is the first time you're coming to Life Church. Um, it's great to have you here, and it's great to have you spend some time with God and in His presence. So, if this is you, we just encourage you to head to the. Don't rush off at the end of the service. Head to the guest area at the back on my left, on your right, and there'll be a pastor there that will be able to speak to you and just speak through bit of who we are and what we do. First announcement for the today is a missions offering. So we've got a call to action. So as a church, we strongly believe in supporting missions. We support um, different churches. We've got a church plant in Italy, missionaries in Longbok and places all across the world. And it is our goal to try and raise $100,000 by, by June. So that's the goal. We're at 60% at the moment. So we're nearly there, but not quite there yet. So I just encourage you to grab a, a brochure at the back or speak to someone at the information desk to help us reach that goal. Um, next announcement I've got is the youth conference. So next Friday and Saturday, we're running our youth conference, which is pretty exciting. I know I'm excited. It's one of the youth leaders. It's going to be a great opportunity for these kids to encounter God in a new and deeper way. So I encourage you to, if you've got kids in the youth encourage them to register and get there and get in the room because we can't influence them and God can't touch and move in their lives unless they're there. We've got Pastor San Martin coming to speak over the Friday and the Saturday. We've got lunch, we've got dinner, we've got activities involved. It's going to be a great time to get closer with one another and most importantly with God. And finally we've got, we're continuing our lunchtime prayers. So 12.30 to one every Tuesday we encourage you if you're in the city or you're around to come to church and just join the team and join everyone here that is just praying if you can't make it into church into the building I still encourage you to try and set some time aside to pray to God because there's nothing we can do without him and praying is just allowing God to move in our lives and finally I just thank you for all who continually to give and I you can either see the information desk or see online to continue to do so let's get ready for the word Amen. Could you give a hand to the worship team and just thank them uh, for what they bring to worship, not only this team, but every team in worship. Thanks, guys, uh, for the incredible work that you do in leading us in, in worship. Many people enjoyed the worship this morning. There was just a beautiful sense of God's presence, and these guys are here from, what time do you guys get here in the morning? Yeah, nine o'clock, is that what you said? No, sorry. <laughs> They're here from about 7.30 practicing for us and they don't finish until 1, 1.30, uh, the team. So, you know, that for volunteers, that's, 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 a, that's a big effort. So come on, give them a hand. <laughs> I speak to some pastors and, uh, you know, you know oh, we were growing and we went to two services and the, and the team died. And so we had to go back to one because the team couldn't support it. But these guys are three services and, and uh, we just thank God for the incredible... Uh, volunteers that we have, not just in the music, but in every single area of our church. And come on, give them another hand. A big thank you. So proud of the team that we have here. It's a pri privilege for us to have uh, Pastor Bruce Hills uh, ministering the word this morning. Um, uh, Pastor Bruce uh, ministers here on a regular basis. Uh, he's involved with an organization called World Outreach International. Uh, it's a missions organization that um, sends missionaries to different parts of the world, particularly those uh, that have not heard the gospel, where, where the, pe there are people that have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, and so um, they are focused on reaching those particular areas. And we have the privilege, as we've already heard, of partnering uh, with some of the missionaries that are actually on the field and um, um, ministering in those particular uh, areas. And so when you give to missions, uh, we are giving to support some of these uh, organizations and some of the missionaries that are literally on the field. I, I think they're the heroes, okay? To me, those guys are the heroes. And they leave this and they say, you know, we're going to go out somewhere where, uh, you know, th they're not going to be able to enjoy what we, you know, the air condition will be cold, it'll be hot, it'll be windy, it'll be this. 
uh, in, into places where there's no air conditioning, you know, and, and they'll serve for years and do it joyfully as unto the Lord. So not all of us are called to do that, but we can all support them in the name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you. Um, 100,000, man, I, I, that, that, that's, that's fantastic. If we can reach that goal, that's amazing. But I pray as a church that we would have a mission's heart and actually we could do so much more. We may not go, but we can put aside some money and say let's, let's sow into, into missions and let's allow God to do some, some great things around the world. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Bruce to come and to minister and share the word. Give him a big hand as he comes. That's great. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Great to be back in uh, Adelaide again. And I'm not here for the footy. I'm here for you. Because uh, the Tigers having a bad year. I don't care this year what's happening. But always great to be here. I, I love coming to this church, and I am one of those people that your church supports in the work of missions. Uh, since I was here last year, I stood down as international director of World Outreach uh, for, to make room for generational change. Even though I'm own head, I'm, I still feel quite young. I am not, as you can tell by the colour of my hair. So I made room for a new generation coming through, and I've reverted to my old role of leadership development director, which is going to different countries and helping to train pastors and leaders. And, and tonight I fly to Vietnam and we're doing a conference there for a few days on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, so I would really value your prayer. And I was planning to fly home this afternoon to catch the night flight and then I got a text from the airline I'm flying, which I shall not name publicly, uh, who said, your flight has been cancelled. Um, so then I had to ring them and now I'm on the two o'clock flight and the next service finishes at one. So unfortunately, that will be the short sermon, not this one. <laughs> so I would just really, really appreciate your prayer. But before I get into the message, I just want to show you a clip. Late last year, I was ministering in Nepal. Any Nepalis in our service today? Jamasi. Okay, thank you. Uh, I was in, in one of the western provinces uh, of Nepal doing a couple of youth camps out there. And my favorite group that I speak to are young adults. I, I love them because they're a generation who believe they can change the world. And I believe that too. And in, in this part of Nepal, it's pretty rough and it's quite poor. And they didn't have a building. They, they hired a school and out on the, on, on the, on the oval, they, they built this I don't know what you'd call it, this, uh, they had poles up and like curtains between them to hold all these young people. But it was the hungriest group of young people I've ever spoken to. And I just want to show you just a 15 second clip of their worship and then tell you what happened afterwards. If you'd like to play that clip, thanks. <laughs> So remember, there's no seats. They're all just sitting cross-legged for hours as they listen to preachers. They're amazing people. Anyway, in the next slide up here, I, I was preaching in that day. I was preaching about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, about living a life sold out for Jesus. Not one foot in the world, not one foot in the kingdom, but giving your all to Jesus. And at the end of it, I invited them to, to begin to pray, to begin to, to yield their lives to Jesus. And they began to call out like I've never heard anybody really seek the Lord before. Have you got the next slide? Up there, please. They, they began to cry out to God. They began to call upon the Lord. They began to just reach out to Him. And it just got louder and louder. And I had no control whatsoever. Isn't it great when the preacher has no control and the Holy Spirit has control? And they, they, they began to call upon the Lord. And as they began to call upon Him, suddenly the glory of God just fell in that place. The presence of God. The, uh, in the Old Testament, they call it the Shekinah glory in the New Testament, the manifest or the experienced presence of God just began to form. In the next clip up here, it got so strong. The holiness of God was so strong. I said, everybody on your knees. We're in holy ground. And the whole congregation just fell on their knees. And we began to just worship and seek God. And 
After about 20 minutes, every unclean spirit that was there started to manifest. So if you can imagine these wild, blood-curdling screams going on, because in that, in that part of the world, it, uh, the majority religion is very spiritual and they worship ancestors and idols and things. So there could be young people there who've been in some stuff. And it was just like God just cleansing them and setting them free. It was the most amazing experience I've ever had in 40 years of ministry. The most incredible, profound move of God, all as a result of people hungering for God and calling upon His presence. And I lived in the afterglow of that for months. So I just want to say to you, when it comes to your your missions giving, it's not invisible people and invisible places, but it's real people uh, doing a real work for God. And I really appreciate your partnership in what we're doing. Thank you. All right, I'm going to come to the message right now, and uh, I really believe that God wants to do some things here here today. And in the first slide that's up here, many of us may recall the incredible rescue of the 12 members of the Wild Boars uh, soccer team and their coach back in 2018. I don't know if you remember the story, but after soccer practice, they decided to go for a hike into a cave complex called the Tham Luang Cave Complex in Chiang Rai in Thailand. While they were inside of the cave, torrential rain fell on the outside, flooding the cave, trapping their their escape back, back to the entrance. And these young men were trapped there for 18 days, four kilometers inside of the cave. And an incredible rescue effort ensued, in, 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 ensued that entailed anesthetizing the young men, putting them in wetsuits, putting oxygen masks on their face, and then specialist divers had to take these anesthetized young men all the way back four, kilo, four, four, four kilometers to the entrance, and all of them were saved. It was an amazing story. But what a lot of people don't remember is a man by the name of Saman Guna. He was 38 years old. He was active in cycling and and in marathons. He was a former highly skilled Thai Navy SEAL. And he volunteered to help with the rescue. What he was doing was he was delivering oxygen tanks to strategic places along the route so that when the young men were being carried out and they, they would come to the surface, they would swap the, 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 the oxygen tanks. But while he was doing that duty, he died. And he died because he ran out of oxygen. He was so busy caring for and rescuing others that he wasn't aware that his own oxygen levels were dangerously low. And I would suggest that all of us who are here today are probably very busy and dutiful to fulfill all our responsibilities at home or at work or at church. But today I want to ask you, how are your oxygen levels? I believe that the Lord doesn't want us to go through 2024 from a position of weariness or discouragement, but he wants us to be full of strength and vision and purpose. So the title of my message today, it'll be on the screen, is Running on Empty. And what I want to have a look at today is what specifically we can do if our oxygen levels Alone, And to do so, we're going to come face to face with a very brave man who was running on empty through circumstances not of his own making. And today I want to turn you to one verse, which is 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse number 6. And we're going to have a look at what this man, David, did to refill his oxygen tanks. Let me just give you the background of the story. King Saul had significant character flaws, and as a result of that, he forfeited the throne that God had given him. Through his rebellion and disobedience, he was rejected by the Lord. And God chose a new man, David, to be the new king of Israel. And as Saul recognized this, he tried to kill David so that he could retain his rule and his dynasty. So for his own safety, David became a man on the run. David was being prepared for the throne, but he was in that period between the promise and the fulfillment. He was in that uncomfortable season of preparation and testing, but the delay was shaping his character, his tenacity and resilience. 
And by the way, friends, if things are not happening for you like you expect, if you believe that God has given you a promise, but it has yet yet to come to pass, please listen to this. God is not delaying you. God is preparing you. Let me say it again. If things are not happening like you expect, God is not delaying you. He is preparing you. For this unfolding story tells us that David was on the run, but it was taking a toll upon him. So to avoid the relentless pursuit and the inevitability of capture, David and his men defected to the Philistines. And one of their kings, Achish, gave him and his men the town of Ziklag. About a year or so later, while fulfilling his, his, his duty to join the Philistines in the army and to fight the Philistines, he was on his way out to face King Saul. The Philistine commanders weren't happy that David was in their midst. They were, they were concerned that he would defect and he would fight for Saul. So they asked him to go back to his town. So David and his men go back to their hometown of Ziklag. When they got there, it's burning with fire because the Amalekites had raided, had burned everything and had taken their wives and children forcibly. David and his men were grief stricken and the Bible says they wept inconsolably. Can you imagine the sound of hundreds of men howling with grief? Imagine that, that, that sound. And then the men's pent up anger, sorry, the pent up pain turn to anger because in our text it says there 1 Samuel 30 verse verse 6 the men were talking of stoning David each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters now this was serious David's life was in danger his men were bitter toward him and the sentiment was if it weren't for you we wouldn't be in this mess and David was alone But he was also suffering terribly. For it says there in that verse, David was greatly distressed. This big, brave giant slayer was crippled by emotional exhaustion, brokenheartedness and distress. He simply couldn't take any more. His oxygen tanks were completely empty. Now, before we look at how he coped, let's just do a quick recap of his life since he had received the anointing to be king over Israel. Out of of raging jealousy, Saul has driven him from his own country. Out of mistrusting fear, the Philistines have asked him to to leave their camp. Out of revenge, the the Amalekites have raided his hometown. Out of plundering greed, his wives and children have been taken captive by the Amalekites. Out of anguish of heart, his friends, whom he trusted, whom he had sheltered, whom he had fed, were threatening to kill him. What was David going to do? How was he going to handle this? And that's where we see the second part of our text where it says there, but David found strength in the Lord his God. David recognized that what he could not find in himself, he could find in God. He may have lacked courage and strength at that moment, but he drew upon the source of all courage and all strength, who is God himself. David was empty on the inside, but he went to the infinite supply of the life of God. And maybe today you can identify with, with, with David Maybe today you feel so weary, so tired because of what is going on in your world. Or maybe the sum total of all your responsibilities is taking a toll upon you. Or or perhaps the stranglehold of fear is tightening its grip around your throat and screaming at you. It will never happen. God's word will never come to pass. His promise will never happen. Everything is against you. Look at your circumstances. Why don't you just give up? And if we feel... Like David, we too need to develop a capacity to lay hold of God for ourselves. Because, friends, when we can hold on to no one else, when we can hold on to nothing else, we can hold on to the character of God. When you've got no one else you can turn to, when no one understands what you are going through, we can depend upon the character of God. When everything else is uncertain, there are certainties that we can hold on to today, such as 
the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the power of God, the word of God, the promises of God, the spirit of God, the strength of God. But maybe you're asking today, but how how do I do that? How do I derive strength from God? And we're going to have a look at this verse to find three quick, quick things about how we can be filled once again. Number one, the first one is we need to listen to our godly friends. Listen to our godly friends. Many years before the story that we're having a look at today, David had been hiding in a stronghold. His oxygen levels were again very low. And Saul's son, Jonathan, his best mate, had come to him. And there's a powerful little verse that you could almost glance over without realizing what it says. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 16, it reads, And Saul's son, Jonathan, went to David at Horesh and helped him find strength in God. Notice that last phrase, helped him find strength in God. In God. So David is, is discouraged. Understandably, life on the run is taking its toll. Jonathan had come expressly to encourage him, and he did so by focusing David upon the Lord his God. And there are times in our lives when God will send somebody, sometimes a friend, sometimes a preacher, sometimes a book. Uh, sometimes it could be our closest friend like here who can help us to do something that we can't do for ourselves, which is find strength in God. Now, our text doesn't tell us exactly how Jonathan helped him find strength in God, but the next verse gives us a clue. 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 17 reads, Jonathan said, Do not be afraid. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. So Jonathan helped David find strength in God by affirming the call that God had placed upon him, by affirming the promises that God had made. It was like Jonathan was saying to him, David, it may seem like the prevailing circumstances in your life at the moment threaten to kill the word of God in your life. But David, do not be afraid. Harm will not come to you. Destruction will not come. Death will not come. God will fulfill what he has said. You will be king over Israel. David, I affirm and I recognize that the call of God is upon your life. Do not be afraid. The promise is not dead. So David, rekindle your faith. We reawaken the promise. Revive your expectation. Renew your trust in God. Restore your passion for his presence. It's just a matter of time. And when we have people who speak into our lives, like Jonathan spoke into David's life. Our spirit is ignited and we are energized to believe God's word. We are enabled with a fresh resolve to endure the test of delay with resolve and resilience. So God always has the right person at the right time with the right message to encourage us and to fortify our faith while we are waiting. And in David's case, it was a godly friend. So I encourage you today, build people around you who know God, who hear God, who love God, and are honest enough to speak the truth in love. Identify your Jonathan. Speak to your Jonathan. Reach out to your Jonathan. Open up to your Jonathan. Listen to your Jonathan and be a Jonathan. If we are to find strength in God, let's not isolate ourselves and withdraw ourselves, but to reach out to those who are the closest to us and listen to them and allow them to speak into our lives. Number two, a second thing I see in this text about how David encouraged himself in the Lord is this. Number two, don't give up and don't give in. Don't give up and don't give in. One of the key words in our text today is the word or the conjunction, but. David is on the run. His oxygen levels are incredibly low. He's distressed. His wives and children have been abducted. His men are threatening to kill him. It could have been very easy for David to throw the towel in and to say, I just can't take any more. He could have reasoned, I've got nothing left. 
But there's this powerful little conjunction there that says, but David found strength in the Lord his God. And this is what I want to speak into your life today. I don't know what you're going through and I've got no explanation about why you're going through what you are going through today. But I do believe this, if you will do what David did, but David found strength in the Lord his God. He made a decision that he was not going to give up and he was not going to give in. This is critical. When your oxygen levels are low, we've got to be very careful about the decisions that we are making. And I want to urge you today to make those decisions. I am not going to give up. I am not going to give in. I am not going to be suffocated by my circumstances. Why? Because I serve the Lord God Almighty. I serve the one who was and is and is to come. I serve the God who created the visible universe by the word of his power. I serve the Savior of the world who purchased me by the blood of his one and only son. I serve the living God who indwells me by the person of the Holy Spirit, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. I serve the God who knows everything that has happened and is happening and will happen. I serve the God who reigns over all circumstances. I serve the God who causes all things to work together for my good. I serve the God who will bring me through any and every circumstance. So I am not going to give up. I am not going to give him. I'm going to change my perspective and focus upon the Lord. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Uh, all of us who serve in the mission in which I serve, none, none of us receive a wage. All of us live by support, like churches like yours, who support us every month. And sometimes it can get a little bit tight and a little bit tough. And every now and then, uh, a pastor of one of our supporting churches will change. And inevitably, within a few weeks of a change of pastor, I get a letter. Dear Bruce... Just want you to know we're now going a different direction and just, just letting you know that we're cutting your support in a few months' time. That happened twice last year within a couple of weeks and that, it takes months to recoup, recoup that. So I was feeling a bit, a bit discouraged. A few weeks after that, one of our longest supporters, who's a businessman in Brisbane, wrote to say, Bruce, I'm retiring at the end of the year and just want you to know that I'll be unable to support you any longer from the end of the year. And it was like another body blow. Then a few weeks later, it was my wife's birthday. I, I took her out to the country for a romantic night. We're driving on the Marunda Highway back toward the, the hotel. I'm going along with the cruise control on 80 and Skippy jumps out in front of my car. A kangaroo, a big kangaroo jumps out in front of my car and just boom in, into this thing and did $25,000 damage and we had the excess of all that. And there was like another big blow. And then a few weeks later, I submitted my tax return and Mr. Taxman wrote to me to say, this year, you owe us rather than us owe you. And I was really feeling discouraged. I felt like I, I got a, I'm a fairly resilient person, but when you have blow after blow after blow, it takes its toll upon you. And I was feeling discouraged and I could feel myself just spiraling down until I really began to get hold of myself like David, but David. And I remember one day vividly praying. I remember just walking up and down saying, God, I did not call myself to do this role. You called me. You know the old saying, if it's God's will, it is God's bill. That Lord, if you've called me, you will provide our need. And Lord, I thank you today. I don't just believe you can supply my need. I believe you will supply my need and my whole thinking changed and then I did what I could do I wrote out the supporters and your church was one of the ones that responded to that and God miraculously turned that whole circumstance around but the biggest change was in here and in here there had to be an attitude shift and I don't know what you're going through today. And I don't know why people go through what they go through. And maybe today you feel that your oxygen levels are really, really low because of what is happening in your world. This is my encouragement to you. David, it says, but David found strength in the Lord his God. And I want to encourage you to make whatever shift you have to make in your thinking and in the things that you say to align with the word of God. Don't give up and don't give in. Don't give up and don't, don't give in. Number three, last one. The third thing I see in this passage here about how David refilled his, his, his tanks was this. Number three, David derived strength directly from God himself. 
David derived strength directly from God himself. Or in, in sub, 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 subtitles underneath, by, by hungering for more of the Holy Spirit. Just asking, yearning for more of the Holy Spirit from God. David derived strength directly from God himself. Now the text doesn't tell us how. So I'm going to suggest a few ways that we can really lay hold of God. For people reach out to God in many different ways. There is not one ideal means or methods. It is as individual as the uniqueness of the personalities in this room here today. But here are a few examples. Maybe play a worship song and just worship God from your heart until you sense His presence. Or maybe have a dedicated time of prayer and fasting, fasting, asking God to intervene. Or maybe withdraw somewhere really quiet just to be alone with Him and to wait in His presence. Or maybe walk on, on, on the beach or the bush just to have time with God. Or, or attend a prayer meeting. It's one of the best places to hear the voice of God. And the goal of these illustrations is to engage with God until we experience His presence. Learn to direct, to derive your strength directly from God Himself. Late last year, my wife and I were visiting her brother in Dalesford, which is just uh, west-west of Melbourne, and we received a phone call to say that my wife's mother had been taken to hospital because she was having trouble breathing. And we go, okay, th th thank you for the call. And, and my mother-in-law had been sick over and over again, but she always bounced back, so we just said, she'll be all right, she'll bounce back. About an hour later, the doctor rang to say, you need to come. She's having organ failure. Her kidneys are shutting down, multi-organ failure. You need to come right away. So we drove right, right back to Melbourne. And sadly, within a couple of days, my, my mother-in-law had died. And, and I was help, helping my wife. And we had the week of preparation. And we had, had the funeral at, at the end of the week. And it was a really hard, tough week. The very next day, we flew to Queensland because I was preaching at a church in Brisbane on the Sunday. And I got there, and this is the day before I was preaching, and I'm empty. I've just got nothing in me. Now, I'm experienced enough to know that I can stand up and deliver a sermon, but I don't want to do that. I'm not just a professional uh, speaker. I'm, I'm a preacher. I'm bringing the Word of God. It's got to come from in here. I was completely empty. So I, I went into the room in the hotel. I pulled out, uh, pulled out um, my, my computer and YouTube and found some worship songs. And I found that one, Waymaker, Miracle Worker. And I just started to play it. As I began to play that, as I began to worship God, as I began to reach out to God, I just felt like God touched my heart and I was given fresh grace and fresh strength for the, reason, for, for the day ahead. And the next day we just had an incredible time in that church up there because it's all because you lay hold of God for your, your, yourselves. In a new, new Testament sense, the source of all the strength that we need is the Holy Spirit who indwells our life. One of my favorite verses that I pray every day is that one up here, Ephesians 3 verse 16 that says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. He strengthens us. So the key to deriving strength directly from God is to ask the Lord today for a fresh touch and a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Or to put it in a different way, ask the Lord to refill your oxygen tanks today. How do we appropriate this? We ask the Lord for more of the Holy Spirit. Ask Him today to renew and to refresh you. Ask Him today to fill you with the life of Jesus. And when you ask, persevere in prayer. Do you remember that time in the Gospels in Luke, Luke 11, verse 1? One of the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And I think it's really interesting that they didn't ask Him, Oh, Jesus, teach us to preach. They begged him basically, Lord, teach, teach us to pray. 
And he, he taught them a version of the Lord's Prayer. And then in verse 9 of that chapter, he said, Ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. In other words, friends, when you ask, you keep on asking. And when you seek, you keep on seeking. And when you knock, you keep on knocking. For Jesus said in verse 10, For everyone who asks, receives, and who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be open. And in the next verse, Jesus got, brought this analogy between human fathers and the heavenly father. And he said there, which of you fathers, if your son asks you for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? Then Jesus said, and this is the point I want to make, verse 13, If you then, though you were evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here's the point. At the start of the passage, they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And at the end of the passage, Jesus said here, this is the answer, ask for more of the Holy Spirit. And so today, if, you're, if your oxygen levels are low, if you are empty, the key is to ask the Lord for more of the Holy Spirit. You can find strength in God today. All the power, all the grace, all the strength that you need to get through today and to get through tomorrow and to get through the week and to get through the year is available for you right here, right now, through the indwelling presence and power of the Holy Spirit. May we learn today to derive strength directly from God himself. And finally, David did find strength in God, but his family and those of his men were still in the camp of the Amalekites. So in 1 Samuel 30 verse 8, David inquired of the Lord to say, Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? And the Lord spoke back and said, pursue them and you will certainly overtake them and succeed in, in the rescue. So despite being so weary, David and his men went out and they engaged in a battle that raged for more than 24 hours and he took back everything that had been robbed from him. Listen to this verse. 1 Samuel 30 verse 19 says, Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else that had been taken. David brought everything back. So my point here today is this. You need to take back what's been stolen from you. We have an adversary who's been trying to rob you of your joy and rob you of your strength and, and to rob you of your vitality in him. You need to take it back. You need to take back everything that the enemy has tried to take from you. When you are refilled with God's spirit, take back everything that is yours in Christ Jesus. So in summary today, maybe you feel like, a, like that man that your oxygen levels are really low. And we've been learning from David today. How do we find strength in the Lord our God? Number one, we, we do so by listening to our godly friends. And I want to encourage you today, don't isolate yourself. Don't withdraw. Don't wither. But reach out to your Jonathan and just let them speak into your life today in Jesus' name. Number two, the second thing we learn from David, it says that he didn't give up. And he didn't give in. It says, but David found strength in the Lord his God. If you have to make one decision today, make the decision, I am not going to give up. I am not going to give in. I'm going to keep pressing in. I'm going to keep laying hold of God. And number three, the third thing we've learned from David is to derive our strength directly from God himself. He is here. And I want to turn your attention back to those, those N Nepali young people late, late last year who had nothing in the middle of the, of the bush in a place just, just sitting before God. They drew upon him. They called upon him. And the presence of the Lord came. And God touched their lives in a powerful way. All that you need is available for you. Now, I, again, I, I don't know what you're going through. But if God has laid this word in my heart, I believe there's many weary, tired people here today and you're not going to leave the same way that you came. You came. God wants to encourage you and strengthen you. Would you mind standing with me, please?
And just as we're standing in God's presence, let's give the Lord reverence in this moment just by closing our eyes, just to shut out distractions around about us. And in your own way, just open your heart to the Holy Spirit and ask for more of the Holy Spirit. Draw upon Him today. Begin to call out to Him today in the name of Jesus. We welcome your presence, Lord. We welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. To the land we will sing feel the oxygen levels are low and this was the right word for you at the right time and you just need a fresh touch and an infilling of God God knows that we're weak and frail and fearful at times He knows that that's why He gave you the Holy Spirit to empower you to live this life and He wants to fill you with that Holy Spirit with His Holy Spirit if that's you would you mind just raising your hands with me and uh, I want to pray for you today that you would just receive fresh touch from God. We welcome the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord Jesus, we are looking to you, for you live within us. Your life is within us through your Holy Spirit. And I pray that, Lord, I pray that prayer of Paul, that, Lord, you would strengthen people in their inner being, Lord, with power today. Strengthen them, Lord. Let them be filled afresh with your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, I pray that you would strengthen people today, that they may learn, I pray, to lay hold of you, that, Lord, they would be encouraged and strengthened and comforted in whatever they're feeling and facing today, that, Lord, you would be their strength. Let there be a mighty Lord, I pray, touch upon your people today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. How we need your Holy Spirit, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit. Then would you just lift your voice and join with me. Let's call upon the Lord. Let's call upon the Lord. We need you, our Father. We need you, our Lord. We need you, our God. We need you, Lord. We're calling upon you today. We're calling upon you today. We're reaching out to you today. Touch us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Touch us with your power. Touch us.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just worship right, right where you're standing. Just worship the Lord. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the Lord is God. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Just lift your hands. Worship the Lord. That's right. One of the ways we encourage ourselves is through worship. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. He encourages himself. Come on, just begin to worship the Lord. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Oh, we praise you, Lord God. We glorify you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. You're going to see us through, Lord. You're going to see us through. You're going to see us through, Lord God. You're going to see us through. Oh. sing forever but now we've got to close the service all right so <laughs> so good to be together so good to worship it's a great word of encouragement and david strengthened himself in the lord his god and david encouraged himself in whinge and wine and he encouraged took responsibility and what a great word uh, for each and every one of us amen may god use you as you go this week uh, may god use you in a powerful way wherever you're placed across the city in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a great week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.